زندگی کیا ہے عناصر میں ظہور ترتیب موت کیا ہے انہیں اجزاء کا پریشان ہونا واٹ از لائف اے ڈیلیکیٹ ارینجمنٹ آف دی آف دا فائیو ایلیمنٹس واٹ از دیتھ اے ڈیزائری آف دیز ایلیمنٹس برج نارائن چکپست دیز آر دا لائنز دیٹ اسٹارٹ دا مووی فار ٹوڈیز ڈسکشن مسان اینڈ نیڈلیس ٹو سی وی ہیو بین ایگرلی ویٹنگ ٹو ڈو دس مووی گزرتی ہے تو کسی ریل سی گزرتی ہے میں کسی پل سا تھر تھر آتا ہوں ہیلو 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 یو ہیو into the cut to scene podcast and i am aditya vijay kumar and i am devansh choudhury and we are here to talk about today's film which is masan to all our listeners who have watched masan but do not remember it or do not recollect it for some reason or the other here's a short summary for masan masan is a film based on the ghats of banaras masan literally translates to bur- the burning ghat where bodies are burnt uh on the banks of banaras we meet uh, devi pathak who is this young lady and uh, she has visited this shady hotel with her lover uh, of sorts and uh, they are caught by the police during a raid in a co- compromising position and uh, and that leads to this young man committing suicide right in front of the police because he is very scared of his parents of of the consequences of this event right so devi pathak's father who is a pandit on the ghats of banaras is called to the police station and uh, one thing leads to another and the policeman finds an extortion opportunity and he demands 3 lakh rupees from devi's father to to clear her name from this whole allegation and get rid of the scandal on the other hand we have vicky koshal's storyline where vicky koshal is deepak who is uh, who belongs to a family of uh, men who who essentially they are called domes in banaras colloquial language and uh, they are supposed to handle the burning ghats so vicky koshal is uh, one of the brighter ones in his family who is uh, undertaking a course in polytechnic and uh, civil engineering and uh, he falls in love with this lady called shalu gupta who is a girl from the upper castes and that is the primary conflict of their relationship midway through the movie uh, vicky koshal finds shalu gupta's dead body on the ghats which then leads to this this saga of sort of sorrow wherein he is trying to deal with this pain while continuing his career and moving on with his life on the other hand we see devi move through different careers trying to find peace uh, trying to move away from the judgmental looks of everyone around her who knows about the scandal and the story is uh, majorly based on the themes of escape and how these two characters try to break free from their from their very constrained narrow lives in banaras to 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 the bigger blossoms of the world but then and and the movie plays out in certain ways which leads to them meeting on the ghats of sangam and uh, them going out for a boat ride which we see as the movie ends and the credits roll on so yeah some word of a uh, of a jari summary there by me and uh, we would move to a discussion wherein we move theme by theme trying to decode what the writers were trying to say and trying to understand what this movie really means and what its different elements try and translate for us so we move to we for some initial thoughts yes so let's start let's go chronologically in the film and uh, uh, it starts with of course the a couplet is that a couplet yeah. yeah yeah so the couplet that you recited at the start of this episode mm-hmm. and which which uh, says that you know life is just a combination of five elements and that is nothing nothing extraordinary but just a disarray of these five elements and then um, the next scene that we see is devi actually watching a porn movie mm-hmm. when i saw, first saw that shot i thought it was just out of pure uh, what do you say uh, curiosity it's teenage teenage yeah. lust it's just jigyasa but then we are uh, we see that that is not the only thing she's 
she gets a phone call on uh, on her mobile and she says yes i'm coming in a few minutes and uh, basically she is going so this is the first time she is about to have sex with somebody who is somebody she knows and uh, they are not married of course uh, and it's just bas unko usko jigyasa mitani hoti hai and uh, so that's the establishing shot of the film and uh, and then we see them go into a hotel and uh, and as as they once mentioned earlier they just uh, they start having sex and then uh, suddenly the police raids and and the guy commits suicide so what we know from this is uh, we get get a few things from from this these scenes one is that uh, it is set in a small town where uh, at some point in the film devi remarks jitni choti jagah utni choti soch and uh, we we get uh, an idea of this whole narrative in the st- starting 5 minutes and uh... so yeah so as you said we we see devi move to the uh, move to the shady hotel and uh, there are some things i found interesting about the first couple of scenes so maybe i could i could talk about that and we could break it down so as devi and uh, this guy uh, pius pius uh, enter the hotel our short sort of changes and we see uh, we see them from behind the glass door so the gra- glass door closes in front of the camera which is which mm-hmm. sort of gives us a voyeuristic feel to the whole exercise you know T- sort of gives you yes. the the shady feel of the exercise now now we move in and uh, these people have switched on the tv now very interestingly i don't know if this is me reading too much as usual but uh, the 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 news clipping that is playing in the background is about yeah. this young guy who's killed by a white tiger because he slipped and fell into the cage they say that this has happened pehle bhi and the the guy uh, was praying and pleading in front of the tiger but the tiger still killed him officials right. say that this might be because of the height of the cage now i yeah. found this to be a very very strong subtext in the sense mm-hmm. ki uh, if you if you look at um, these two the current couple in 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 the frame they are going in to slip into a cage or a problem uh, because the length of the wall that is the wall that is separating this from happening is very very short i mean th- it is feasible it is so happened that the society has got them to meet and uh, the the curiosity the sexual curiosity that they have has got them together at that point at that place so the wall was very short in in within 5 minutes of this happening the chacha said that like devi devi would be pleading in front of the police officer so the yuvak bag ke samne gidgidata raha part also comes in similarly yeah. if you look at vicky kaushal and shalu gupta they also slipped into something why because the walls were very short they met frequently they were able to access and they facebook played a very strong role in mm. that as we right. see into the movie and uh, and then the movie brings vicky kaushal's character down to a point where he is pleading and where he is crying uh, out loud when he says ye dukh sala khatam kahe nahi hota because because wo itna tadap raha right so i found that to be a very good foreshadowing instrument for the entire mm-hmm. movie then we talk about uh, so then, so uh, yeah, yeah. before you go ahead uh, i mean i if you uh, i i noticed there was there were two news clippings one was right. about the white tiger the one after that was about swami ji right right baba ji ke and, private uh, life mein kya ho raha hai ha exactly and uh, yeah i mean like that's that's uh, again so it's 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 also in some sense you know and this 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 thing is repo- repeated across the film that um, the the threat that the cop mishra gives to the pathak fa- the father of devi and devi is that uh, i will put these things on youtube so this the whole thing has become sort of some sort of a voyeuristic collective and uh, that, that's what is also said in the whole thing ki baba ji ne gufa mein kya kiya and things like that so so it's the it, the 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 i also i mean even i thought i was reading too much into it but since you also noticed this maybe maybe we are not reading too much into so yeah so we talk about this and then uh, i think let's first explore all elements of cast because that is a very strong foundation on which this movie is built so uh, what do you think about the elements and how were they shown first of all you know because it is banaras we know that the caste system and the uh, and in general the uh, you know religion plays a big part implicitly in the lives of all these people and that is i think i mean at least me as a as an indian watching the film i that is just obvious to me that it will play a big part in the film now uh, what i liked about how this film deals with caste is it does not make it 
you know it does not put it in your face in the sense it never says ki are main wo hu ye wo there's no very little of tell and there's a lot of show there's not right? like really a romeo juliet conflict of caste or of opposition it is yeah, exactly. it is there in the background and you know it is affecting the actions of all the characters involved yes yeah, exactly correct. and 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 uh, of course we will come to the fact the the most uh, pivotal caste conflict in the film which is which is between the characters of deepak and shalu but you should also understand that the the caste uh, there's there's a reason why uh, vidyadhar uh, pathak does what he does i mean in the sense like he is uh, he is a high caste brahman and uh, he does the kriya karma on the ghat and uh, there's there's a reason of course why why even uh, deepak's character is from the dome cars uh, one one thing that i found very uh, interesting about uh, deepak's character is that a lot of things which relate to his cast are very normalized for him for example um, the one of the introductory scenes of uh, deepak's character is when his mother tells him to uh, get fire for, for the, the stove stuff. and he yeah. lights it up from a funeral pyre yeah which uh, which is which is i mean i thought that was a very Right. It was a very jolting scene for me right. when I first saw it, and I remember seeing this about five years ago, four, four, five years ago, and it was a very jolting scene because what he's literally doing is going to a burning funeral pyre, taking a twig, lighting it from there, and going to the stove and lighting the the stove which is giving them food with the fire of that funeral. So, so this this is a very very great establishment device because it just establishes that. uh this is his daily life and uh, it's like you know how how people say that matlab doctors ko khoon se dar nahi lagta kyunki wo log to har din dekhte hai usko it's normalized in their head this also sets up the context of deepak's character for you and it also in some sense establishes the uh, makes an effort to establish the conflict uh, it tells which, you a lot i mean yeah. uh, the the symbolism that you correctly pointed out ki uh, the they are using it to light the stove which gives them the food is is very very strong because that is how they earn right mm-hmm. and and as we as we later move into the uh, the discussion on the economics of the ghat i mean that is how they earn the food that is how they eat so that is why and that is something that they actually do in fact like i was listening to this interview by gavan and varun grover and they were saying that they researched and they were there in banaras and that is what they found out uh, the mm-hmm. people of the ghats that is how they light their stoves so that is a usual practice for them mm-hmm. uh, and uh, as far as the caste is concerned i think uh, even like in devi's case what is very very pronounced is that her father is a is a brahmin is an upper caste right and uh, if you if you notice the even in the opening scene when he's called to the police station he's asked his name right and yeah. and suddenly his volume goes down because because of the because of the inherent shame sure. related to it he's like pathak vidyadhar pathak that is because of that right and uh, apart from that even her name like the fact that her she's named devi which sort of has mm-hmm. like if you see it from a small town perspective it would have an ironic you know ironic exactly. twist to it ki oh dekho naam devi ka hai and kaam aise aise hai sort of uh, a thing that is also very very significant i feel yes and also later into the movie when when we have established that uh, the characters of deepak and shalu are now in love and deepak is talking to his friends about it and the dialogue that that one of his friends says is gupta ji hai sambhal ke hai that's of course you're not directly saying ki are wo upper caste hai aur tum lower caste ho but that that one thing is i mean it it shows you how how normalized it is to think ki matlab agar gupta ji hai to kuch kuch farak nahi padega i i like that fact that you know the the angle of caste comes in at is is implicitly present in all frames of the film another yeah, word, point that that is very very inconspicuous is how shalu realizes that her parents will never agree to the thing mm-hmm. because when when deepak asks her previously on the bike ride uh, whether her parents would agree for their marriage she says i don't know later when she's on the route to badrinath and she's sitting at this dhaba and they're having this food they're praising the food and then then yeah. in the background her mother says ki acha swadesh to hoga hi gupta gupto ka dhaba hai ya yeah, gupta ji ka dhaba hai which uh-huh. which then she realizes that okay there is something here and then she goes and calls him to yeah. say that even if they don't agree we'll run or something we'll manage yeah so yeah. a yeah. couple of more places where where you know this uh, normalization aspect that i talked about is very 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 obvious is uh, so uh, there is the scene where where of course this character of piyush which is the person that 
uh, Richa Chadda's character Devi had sex with and why she got caught by the police. Um, uh, when he dies and when Uska Kriya Karn Ho Ra Hota Hai on the cart, Devi's character goes yeah. up on the on the on the ledge to mm-hmm. see it, and it's Vicky Kaushal who's um, sorry, I mean Deepak who's who's actually burn who's helping light the, the right. funeral fire. Right. And also, she's denied like, the entry into the ghat. Yeah, yeah. I mean that. Woman, of course. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, but but uh, so the the dialogue that Deepak says is sort of do azor samaro on the skull. He's he's asking uh, Piyush's father to hit yeah. his skull harder so that it it can arthi achhe se bha sakte ho tum. No, so the yeah the the concept to it is that if you break the skull properly, the soul can escape. Yeah, so yeah, right. Essentially, yeah. So that is what they believe. Um, yeah, and 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 so that's that's one more. Uh, who I mean, who would say such a thing, right? And uh, then then there's a third place where uh, Deepak's Deepak's brother Sikandar is uh, working on the cart, and this is just when when Deepak's father and all are drinking and they have that conversation mm-hmm. about right. about the economics of the cart, mm-hmm. and you see that you know a small girl's uh, leg is sticking out. Right. And and then uh, Deepak's father just uh, tells uh, Sikanta to ki what the we are uh, uh, thrust her leg in essentially. Uh, thrust her leg in. And uh, I mean and this all this is said without even a tinge of emotion on their faces. Right. Which is uh, which is something which I personally did not know this uh, the culture the culture and the sociology of the ghat very much and this is something that I got to know all from the film. Uh, so which, for them which, it is sort of dehumanized the act of death like the very exactly uh, yeah. presence of that around them right? it's normalized it's yes very very normalized uh, mm-hmm. okay now uh, i guess let's explore the uh, the the point of the theme of love in the in the entire movie so uh, from what it comes off initially if you look at uh, devi and piyush right mm-hmm. it might because because they uh, she's always mentioned him as a friend she's always mm-hmm. said that okay he's a friend और हमें जिज्ञासा थी हमारी बातचीत होने लग गई या वट एवर वट एवर बट द नंबर ऑफ टाइम शी गोज बैक टू यू नो द पर्सन बिकॉज शी सीज यंग पीपल सेलिब्रेटिंग अ बर्थडे शी गोज बैक टू हिम शी गोज टू हिज यूनिवर्सिटी शी सीज एन आर्टिकल हिज ऑबिचुअरी शी सील्स दैट शी लुक्स एट ऑल हिज अचीवमेंट शी लुक्स एट एट द फेसबुक पोस्ट सो सो एसेंशली वॉट इज हैपेंड इज दैट शी इज सॉर्ट ऑफ यू नो स्टिल अटैच टू इट I mean, mm-hmm. we might we might look at it from an angle that okay, wo mar gaya, but this act has heavily impacted her life. But at the mm-hmm. same time, she was also invested in him. Right. right. And the second part, which I found really really sweet, was the way the teenage romance between Shalu and Deepak was shown. You know, because uh, the way they were talking on the phone, and then and then her mother calls her, and then she she's like bye 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 bye, and then he's like rukiye rukiye rukiye, tum bola karo. and then she says that uh, uh, acha theek hai pehle do share yaad karke sunaiye bye 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 and she keeps the phone yeah. that is that is really really sweet i mean that is mm-hmm. a very apt portrayal of love in a small town is what i mean correct correct another thing is the favorite oh, uh, since yeah. you are at that i uh, the acceptance scene or yeah, yeah i was the, just coming the, to the that proposal, the proposal yeah. scene so to say is yeah. when uh, they are at durga puja uh, yeah. what do you say celebrations and uh, these they they both buy a balloon the hydrogen balloons of the same uh, basically the same <laughs> hydrogen balloon yeah, yeah. helium so sorry 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 the helium balloons which, astrophysicist uh, must yeah yeah sorry merely hydrogen and helium same hota hai but anyway so they buy these uh, uh, helium balloons and and uh, one is with the uh, uh, one is with shalu's character one is with deepak's character and uh, they have not talked directly till up to this point and uh, it's just that you know what happens is just uh, deepak just lets the balloon go up in the air and he walks back saying ki matlab shalu me ko bhav nahi de rahi and then that he looks back and he sees that shalu's balloon is also uh, flying high up in the air with his and which i thought was brilliant imagery right. Uh, I just and, I just have a differing opinion on the point that Shalu मेरे को भाव नहीं दे रही because I thought he let it out to show it to her in, in the okay. sense that he he released it to show it to her and he releases it and then he looks back and then he sees that the balloon is uh, the balloon is soaring in the air and that is okay. I mean in my personal opinion it is the most beautiful scene of consent I've ever seen uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> acceptance if not of consent yeah acceptance um, let's not talk about consent uh, right, just yet not, but but that. Uh, but then i mean so uh, yeah so that's that's one scene and then 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 you see when when 
when Deepak's character goes to the cyber cafe, which he visits quite often to check his right. Facebook and see if he, if Shalu has uh, accepted his friend right. request, and you see that sees that uh, Shalu has accepted his friend request. Three seconds ago, yeah. Yeah. And I, then they're meeting. Where, yeah. they, where, where he very sweetly asks her, to hum friends ho gaye na. Okay, By the way, when I was reading the script, you know, do you want to know what the, uh, uh, the, the cafe Pizzeria. is called? It's called Pizzeria Vatica. It's called Pizzeria Vatica. It's actually there in Banaras, so Pizzeria is oh, actually it's, there. No, it's called Pizzeria Vatica. I know, it's actually there. Okay, okay. So yeah, shout nice. out to Pizzeria, our favorite cafe back in Pilani. Anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah. And shout out to Varun Grover who we spotted in the background of the scene. Yeah, yeah, blurred background. Nice, nice. Uh, so yeah, that sums up the romance part, most of it. The the only the second part is uh, how they go to Sangam, then they like they you know steal this moment of privacy <laughs> on the banks of Sangam, and uh, which is also depicted in a very very beautiful way, and uh, the way those lines are exchanged. And V, would you <laughs> like to elaborate about how it was written in the script? Yes, yes, I'm just uh, trying to find that. Yes, okay. so so basically the the thing is that they are in a uh, in in sort of a desert under a deserted tree where there's just the two of them. Sangam unke samne hai. Sangam meaning the confluence of the three rivers uh, near Arabad, and uh, <clears throat> and they're just sitting there. And uh, Deepak makes the first move to a kiss, and uh, he he just kisses her on her lips. And uh, she's a bit taken aback, and then he says sorry, and then they kiss more. And then okay. he says, "Ghar ki sabse choti ho, isile pyar aagya," because that is what she was saying exactly, like a few moments back. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, so in the script, this the action line for this is, at this she breaks into a smile and he smiles too, but the smile vanishes as he bends forward again. This time she is ready. The kiss goes from gentle to hot. To the best the Sangam has ever witnessed. So imagine the best kiss that one can have on the banks of the Sangam and that's it. So, so uh, for the audience, I mean, the purpose of an action, action line on a script is essentially to let the cinematographer and the director and everyone and the actors and the whole crew know what is going on in the scene. Right, a line like this is very, very optional. is very uh, arbitrary because hardly hundred people in the world read the script again. So, mm-hmm. so uh, it is very arbitrary. But then, uh, it it depends on the screenwriter on how well he can communicate what he means to say and how well he can, you know, uh, communicate the imagery that he is trying to create. Which is why, you know, like so they won't they won't have specified that they go in for the kiss three times. But then mm-hmm. once you write something like this, then the actors know what they have to do. So essentially, yes. that is why this is very, very important. And no, very and, 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 and if, you, if you read the script and then you watch the scene again, there's there's a thing. So it's a three-stage kiss, right? Okay. I mean, right, so in, in as it is written in. Right. And even in, even the camera, if you see, the, that takes them from the side first mm-hmm. for the first two times. And when the kiss becomes the best they've ever seen on Sangab, it just becomes a shot of their faces right. kissing. Right. So, so it's, um, I mean, it's, such things which are written into the script also guide the director and cinematographer to even shoot these scenes. To from talking about what the screenwriter writes and what the director directs, we seg- segue mm-hmm. into uh, arguably one of the best scenes of the movie and uh, a, a very popular scene of the movie wherein sitting mm-hmm. Deepak is sitting on the banks of the Ganga with his friends, this bridge in his background, this pertinent bridge which we always see in the movie and uh, and um, we we see him drinking. Uh, around a fire and uh, they're talking and this is after Shalu's death so sort of one of the first sittings that he's having with his friends after Shalu's death and uh, yeah so we would you like to talk about this soon so yes so uh, I mean if if uh, we didn't give it away that this scene is the the famous uh, scene where where just uh, Vicky Kaushal's character Deepak just breaks down because if you notice uh, he's he's seen uh, Shalu's character dead on the cart and uh, he's here he's taken the ring from her but he's not shed a tear until this point he is not shed a tear and this is a, a nice 15 20 minutes after that scene and he's still not shed a tear and he's bottled everything up and this is the point where it comes out right and uh, the very interesting thing is this scene is not like this at all on paper 
it's just a lot of dialogue 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 and it just ends there is no breakdown per se in the actual script and uh, this this of course uh, uh, and and not only this but the, the 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 screenplay differs from the film in many many aspects in the sense um, i i think even though the film is quite short uh, at about uh, 1 hour 45 minutes the screenplay is actually probably worth at least 1 hour more so it it was i think it was supposed to be like a 2 and a half hour 2 hour 45 minutes movie but was edited down to 1 hour 45 minutes there are a lot more things explained in the screenplay and i would recommend everybody to go read the screenplay it is available for free on mofart club and uh, and film, film companions, companions. So, yeah so, and uh, uh, coming back to this scene for once uh, so that yeah. is not how varun rover the writer had imagined it to be yeah. uh, vicky kaushal who doesn't drink and this is a video available on youtube where varun rover talks more about this scene vicky kaushal is a person who does not drink but for that particular scene he insisted that he'd actually use real liquor and and once he does that he gets uh, he gets drunk uh, and uh, and then he goes on and on and on and it's a huge 6 uh, minute shot that they took but like we obviously see a shorter version in the in the actual film uh, the dialogues for this scene uh, which were written for his friends were also something uh, completely different what they did there wherein one friend is trying to bribe him by giving him the keys of his bike and he like le tu bike le tu yeah. ja or uh, the other friend is saying hum tumko maarenge which is also a very sweet uh, small town friend thing uh, to do uh, all of that was improvised what right. strikes me the most uh, the mother of all coincidences is that there was a train passing by in the background at that particular <laughs> point of time and vicky drunk vicky kaushal decided to turn around point to it and say to kisi rail se guzarti hai main kisi pul sa tha tha raha hu is that so, a coincidence by the way or was it wasn't yeah, yeah. planned yeah yeah the it train wasn't planned at all yeah yeah oh i see okay that's that's cool so mm-hmm. that motif just came around and played it its part uh, somehow uh by the way that is the exact same bridge from which uh, devi's train passes later on in the movie and it goes the other direction like away from banaras because she is moving right. towards alabad right? Uh, right so yeah anyways uh coming back to you were talking about the differences in the script and one major difference is the conflict of deepak's brother mm-hmm. so yeah so uh, sikandar's conflict is written much more uh, i i don't think we need to talk about it really but like okay. Sure, sure. But uh, I think, but uh, ah, so, so so the the whole the whole plot of Sikandar has been edited, sort of edited into the movie. Uh, mm-hmm. But then even now, if you see the movie, you know that there is something that is boiling there. I mean, there mm-hmm. is a story that should be explored there because yeah. you know we see this constant tension between Sikandar and his father. Uh, the point is, uh, you I mean, like I I really thought that uh, Sikandar's character was slightly underwritten because we see that he's angry. we see that there is some conflict brewing there but we really don't get a sense of why that conflict is brewing and and uh, only when you read the script do you realize that it's it's the conflict which is very deeply written into the script but has been edited out and you know it, it in some sense it just t- changes the whole story as well and uh, which is quite i don't know i don't know how i feel about it but uh, but it it the, the script and the the movie are completely different it's almost like the script was some fan fiction version it's it's right. that different i think right right yeah. uh, one thing that i found very interesting okay first let's uh, talk about the economics of the ghat uh, that was also a very very powerful commentary on the the lifestyle of the people there and the caste system again because these are domes and they have this concept of a dome raja and they were just uh, deepak's father is sitting with his uh, fellow domes and they're discussing this right and who's the dome raja sort of they're discussing who's the most successful or who's the wealthiest out here and they discuss this concept which i find very interesting of uh, them having divided the earnings of the entire ghat into and that is a very effective way of killing competition in an economic scenario wherein you yeah. wherein you uh, so everyone works at the ghat the whole ghat earns and then the earnings of one particular day or one particular period of time goes to the owner of that time and they, mm-hmm. so they have so, sort of divided slots amongst themselves and uh, so he talks about how uh, earlier people used to be very very rich like their ancestors used to be very very rich but as time went on and these people started having kids and their kids had multiple grandkids uh, 
the division ha- uh, so happened that now a lot of those people are facing extreme poverty uh, mm-hmm. which goes to speak about their lifestyle which also then comes back to why deepak and shalu have this huge gap that they have to bridge for them to come together mm-hmm. the sort of backgrounds that they're coming from one thing that i find mm-hmm. really interesting in the movie which is very well portrayed probably because uh, you know grover and gehwan come from uh, cities like these or they they understand these cities mm-hmm. so well is the right. small town mentality yes right so for example uh-huh. once uh, when the when piyush and devi move into the hotel the hotel guy after having that conversation gives a weird glance towards devi i mean they right. have they have this awkward look when deepak and uh, shalu are in the stationery shop where deepak is making excuses of buying civil engineering books so that he can pass on that heart shaped eraser to shalu uh, the shopkeeper notices he is noticing yeah. he gives a glance yeah, yeah. to them glance and to them. he smiles yeah. he smiles so so there is that awkwardness of the small town right uh, you know i mean i just i i just don't think that this is only present in a small town i mean we see this in indian cities as well as right. in, i i don't i don't think for example pune is a small town and i have seen this in pune as well like for example if you if you go to a go to a medical store to buy condoms you get these things right and I if mean, you if you so buying yeah. a condom is a, is a is a thing that is on a much higher scale in this context in at least deepak and shalu's context right, right? of course and that is why yeah. I, i was yeah so anyways go ahead i don't think like the the this 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 thing is only present in the small town and it's also it's also very prevalent in the uh, big towns is i mean the, the big cities as well it's not it's not that this is just a small town mentality thing i think right right okay makes sense maybe because so what i meant by small town was what was present in the big cities back in the 2000 you know 2008s 2010s right. i mean 10 years back uh, something that we would have witnessed in our teenagers Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Right. So, so that is what I was referring to. Uh, so, anyways, uh, and then comes the very interesting character of Pankaj Tripathi, who just fills the mm-hmm. movie with a, a very, very different shade. A smile. A smile. Yeah, he is the one who brings <laughs> the first smile on Devi's face in the entire movie when he says, uh, uh, "Devi, nahi ast buja Devi hona chahiye apka naam," because she is she is just focused on her work. So, yeah, yeah, what do you think about that character? Why was it used? What is the purpose? um so again like this character is also much more i mean is more fleshed out in the script i think you know there is this scene towards in the script where so this the last scene in in uh, when we see uh, pankaj tripathi's character sadhya ji in in the movie is when they are on a sort of a farewell dinner and uh, she sees this i mean where where the whole thing about she seeing a group, group of college kids uh, beating up uh, another of their friends is and and she gets disturbed and she leaves the scene but uh, there's a precursor to that scene written into the script where uh, devi actually goes to sadhya ji's house she meets uh, sadhya ji's uh, father father and things like that which which has come earlier in the script when uh, sadhya ji actually gives her uh, kheer made by her father uh, his father uh, what i want to say is that sadhya uh, the character of sadhya is written much is given more flesh in the script but is not it's again like you know cut out in the edits in the movie i i sort of thought of it as a very uh, nice character again i i like sikandar's character i thought it was underwritten but it's it's over edited other than underwritten i think so yes i i think the the first time where we see sadhya ji i i thought of him as a very great character at the start because he's he says uh, the first dialogue that he says is up 2 minute baad jaati to main ab mera bottle bhi bhar la <laughs> who says that <laughs> uh, that's that's not like you know a very cordial thing to say i guess right and uh, but but then you realize that he's not really a great character he's just a very simple ton he was a simple man and uh, he's someone who lives with his father is is a is is prop, is middle aged is very well into his uh, Uh, 30s, 30s late 30s and he's yeah. more, more like a 40 year old virgin he's exactly. he's he's unmarried and uh, and and so so there's that of course that dichotomy of a 40 year old virgin and and somebody who because she wanted to lose her virginity is in deep trouble um, oh, nice yeah point. so that 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 also, ang- uh, that, that, that that angle that sadhya's character gives in the film is 
is something worth thinking about it's I a think. welcome relief also from the constant tone of the film because for me personally he awarded me with the one big chuckle of the movie wherein he says she asks him aap akele rehte hain and he's like ki nahi hum babu ji ke sath rehte hain babu ji akele rehte hain ha yeah oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> matlab din mein yeah yeah awkward awkward glance between them after which he says matlab din mein akele rehte hain <laughs> yeah keeping in tone with the films uh, films narrative which which says ki all these people want to escape the small town ha. right the and there is one more thing which is written into the script about about uh, uh, sadhya ji's character is that he says ki once you know unke papa guzar jata hai like once his father passes away he wants to go on a bharat darshan hmm. in the train and right. so that is another thing you know where where he wants to uh, leave there's one dialogue that he says ki aapko pata hai yahan kitni trainen uh, rukti hai wo bolti hai 28 and then he says kitni trainen nahi rukti Chaucert. and he says to that ki uh, um, aana asaan hai, hai. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and uh, so again so i think that narrative of everybody in the town just wants to be liberated and get rid of this small town mentality is is sort of there in every character's uh, storyline even even jhonta for that matter like he also wants to you know escape uh, this in the script this, in the script in the script, yeah. in the script of course uh, and yeah so that's why i think it would be very interesting if, if you know if they have really shot those scenes and if they release these cut scenes some day i i would really like to see them yeah Please. hopefully hopefully yeah, uh, yeah, then uh, also one one important thing about sadhya ji that i found pretty remarkable was that he was the first person who was recognizing devi for her capabilities and not yeah. for her past because she had done something which had sort of so to say scarred her past uh, everywhere she went that that taboo followed her uh, when she went to the coaching center for a new job it followed her and she was constantly conscious of that when she went to the ghat even her father sent her back uh, right? right so because he was ashamed of it so she wanted to get rid of that and when she goes here uh, sadhya ji is the first one who's like are ab to ashtabhuja devi honi chahiye because he's recognizing her for her computer abilities uh, one good uh, sort of a coincidental easter egg that i found was that when pankaj tripathi so there is this person who's waiting in front of pankaj tripathi because he's he sort of close the ticket counter and yeah, yeah. Uh, and devi ji is operating constantly mm-hmm. and um, so pankaj tripathi then asks this passenger where he wants to go and the passenger says mirzapur mirzapur ah. Ah. <laughs> anyways uh so one more thing is why does devi say no to the couple who were asking for a ticket i don't know so it it harks back matlab she just gets jealous maybe she feels that these people are able to express the sexuality even on the on the train station in front of everybody without also, at the end of their exchange uh, yeah. the girl says to the boy i don't want to go back to the shady hotel Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So that is this happens. Something. Yeah, this happens after this happens after she uh, rejects though. The, the rejects no, no, the ticket. no. Is it? It happens. Okay. No, it happens before it, and then she she has looked at it. She has seen that there are twenty six seats available, and then the uh-huh. girl says that uh, I don't want to go back to the shady hotel. After which uh, yeah. Devi says that there there are no tickets. Yeah, so, but then she, we can you can see the anger or like the frustration right. built up within her because. she sees these two people who's prop who are probably the age of uh, of of piyush who passed away uh, they they are expressing their sexuality so much they you know she they are getting clingy and and yeah. you know they are they trying to kiss each other and uh, but but then uh, she has been denied the freedom uh, and they 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 look like you know uh, city going people i think they asked for a ticket to delhi which is right. which is basically like where, where yeah. i think that that conflict gets established of you know the big town and the small town mm-hmm. uh, right. so i think that's why she denies them the tickets and uh, which is it is just a very human moment there so another theme that uh, i would like to talk about is when you compare these two lovers you know when you compare vicky kaushal and when you compare devi's character uh, yeah. how their love stories go because uh, what i feel is so vicky kaushal uh, is a very vocal character in that sense he has throughout the movie he's expressed himself pretty well uh, when he was sad we see him uh, breaking down on the garch we see him throw the uh, ring into the river we see him crying in front of his friends when he is happy we see him celebrating with his friends 
uh, on the other hand uh, devi comes across as more of a loner she has to keep it inside she has to hold it and she has to sort of she feels that the world is against her she isn't as vocal is essentially what i'm trying to say she does not even have a father on her side so the transition uh, i find that very interesting because this one devi is facing the consequences of her action she is yeah. uh, trying to trace back the roots of piyush and where he came from trying to locate his family so that she can go there for some sort of closure whatever so she is sort of uh working on the reparations of what she has done at the same mm-hmm. time her father uh who has so far held a moral high ground is now moving into something that he never knew that he'd do sort of going to do something immoral which is play with the life of the kid for for yeah. money right mm-hmm. and he does that and he makes him dive so mm-hmm. while one character is moving from their moral so to say lower ground to a higher ground by seeking closure and trying to make reparations the other one who's a father is now moving on the in the opposite direct uh, direction so yeah mm-hmm. uh, that brings us to the point but one interesting yeah, yeah. thing one interesting thing thing about the film's commentary itself is that it does not judge any of the character any of the characters for its uh, morality for their morality even even the uh, you know the policeman even his morality is not judged it's it's given as like a give, said in a very in your face manner ki matlab ha ye hota hai corruption is there it's very normalized it's just present and then you see the last time when you see the uh, not the last time the second last time when you see the policeman he is on the ghat with his daughter and uh, such things are i mean just put there i mean so he also has a daughter and he probably can understand what the father is going after going through at that point but that does, that doesn't make a difference to him the morality of the characters is never judged which is one thing uh, i like a lot about the film mm-hmm. they they present it to you in a neutral fashion and then you are mm-hmm. free to take it however you want to which is yes. how i mean i don't know ideal art should be uh, yep. but that is a blanket statement to make so i will refrain from doing that anyways okay. so we were talking about jontua ha huh. so we were talking about jontua and and his character where so he's just a small kid who works as an assistant in in uh, Pathak's uh, stall on the ghat and uh, he is in charge of bringing the customers and getting the customers etc but you know uh, the first time that that jontua goes into the into the river to fetch the coins and uh, we we realize that you know this uh, pathak is putting a too much pressure on him he's a kid after all he uh, he likes watching magic shows he likes you know going around and fooling around with his friends and things like that but uh, in in patak's eyes he is literally the person who can get him the money he needs to pay back his pay back the policeman for and uh, that is undue pressure on this uh, small kid now you sort of think ki matlab ye bacche ko matlab jhonta ko kuch pata nahi hai uske bare mein ki matlab ki he uh, but but you realize it towards the end that the reason why he you know went deeper into the into the river is because he knew that patak had bet a large sum of money for him and he had to win and in that process he ended up overdoing it and though he got a ring which is coincidentally the ring that deepak's character threw into the river which belonged to shalu initially so even even though he got the ring he almost risked his life while doing that so um i think that uh, the the fact is the reveal that happens in the hospital which is it's i think again one of my favorite it's actually one my my favorite scene in the film apart from of course the dukh ka sala ye dukh ka hai khatam nahi hota and because because it's it it has a lot of is for example it it's it's somehow uh, it there's a coincidence which is which is ma- you can you can call it magical realism if you want to there is the sense of uh, the, it adds a more complexity to his character in the sense that even though he's a kid he realizes that pathak did what he did for a reason and that and he had some responsibility to pay it back to pathak uh, so yeah i mean uh, in that sense i think uh, jhonta's character initially where when we we think that he's just a child towards the end we start of thinking of him as a much more complex guy also i think uh, li- like somewhere down the line there is this sort of a food chain that exists wherein if you look at uh, who is taking advantage of whom or who is mm-hmm. essentially using whom as a sort of a cash cow uh, you know the policeman is looking at pathak as a as as his as the muse 
uh, sort of the money bringer and and Pathak is using Jhontu as the money bringer or so to say like you know exploiting them or however you want to put it yeah so i think i think it also goes to say about how everyone is taking advantage of or or taking someone or the other for granted and that that just there is a trickling down effect and um, mm-hmm. so sort of that is how Jhontu comes into the picture and how he is affected how about the closure for these characters how how they get closure or whether they do or not Let, let's talk about character by about it character by character now uh, for example uh, for piyush and shalu's character the closure is death so right. they are yeah, the, for them the closure is death for for uh, vidyadhar pathak's character the closure is him being able to pay back his uh, karza so to say to the policeman and then also the fact that he's he's now alone in life because uh, he only has jhontua for company because towards the end uh, devi just leaves him and goes to alabad jhontua's character also redeems i mean it's to, towards the end he gets closure by giving the uh, ring to uh, with the other part of character the other two main characters of the film basically devi and uh, deepak so devi devi of course uh, all the loans and all the karzas are paid back and uh, devi just leaves for Allahabad, where she goes into Piyush's house, house, which she's been wanting to do for so much time. And it's almost as, you know, she wants to wash her sins away by going there. She's welcomed at the door by someone who I assume was Piyush's mother, who takes her inside, and all we hear after that are sounds of slaps. Uh, Is the sound of one slap? One and then slap. a lot of ranting uh, yes. from, from Piyush's father. From his father. In in some sense, Devi's character arc starts with a slap in the start with uh, by her father. And and one thing to notice in that in both the, while she's uh, getting the slap from her father and from Piyush's father, there is no she does not she is not you know uh, she is not defending herself. She right. she provides defense. And uh, when you see see the shot after after she comes out of the house and she's on the cart on mm-hmm. Sangam, you see that. She she wears a more confident look. It's like, you know, okay. she koi bojha uske sar se nikal gaya. Right, Something right. Like that. So that is her closure. I and find course, it very interesting that that shot was taken as a long shot because, yeah. uh, you know, in any other way, if I imagine the camera following her into the house or, and also uh, I'll just mention that there is a very interesting part where she goes into the coaching center to get her books back. That has mm-hmm. to be a confrontational scene where is she's, uh, she's you know, uh, confronting the person who just called her and abused her on the phone. And uh, that whole sequence is handheld because yes. you have to show that restlessness. You have to show that yeah. uh, sort of a feel to it. Before that, yeah, I think I think that is the only sort of, you know, pure artsy shot in the film. In the sense, there's no other still shot which is long without without nothing happening in the frame. Right. This is just a still shot, right? I mean, it's there's nothing happening in the frame. All you see, all you hear, is just voices. Right. I don't in think that a lot of like, like one Banaras cliche would be any documentary that you see on Banaras would show you like kids roaming around or babas on the ghat and stuff like uh, that. You know, okay, s- and, still... and a lot of foreigners yes. and things like that. Right, right, right. So none of that is shown in the movie. So yeah. yeah. So anyway, so it is only fair that I feel that uh, since Devi has been like very lonely throughout the movie, it is only fair that even this shot has her exposed in a long shot where she is the only one in the frame uh, for a long, long time. And then and then all we are doing is hearing what is happening with her. And then she's coming back because this is the last time that we know her wherein she is going to be alone. Because after this, presumably Deepak is there. Right. So we do not yeah. know where their story go from here. But then for us as an audience, this is the last time we are seeing her alone. And and that loneliness stretched into a long shot and, and there to be only an audio device for it is, I think, uh, very, very correct and very, very, very nice. No, I uh, so I, and, and, you know, the, the shot that we see after that is them sitting on the cart and she just, you know, putting the gift that she received from Piyush into the water and uh, and then just crying after that. And then. And here we come to, you know, Deepak's closure, which he has, you know, he has scored a job in the railway board and uh, he is moved to, uh, to, to Allahabad to become a manager in the, whatever, the railway workshop. And now he is just leading his life. He has, uh, there's a scene where, where his father asks him, sab theek hai kya? and then he just stares into the oblivion, thinks for a moment and says, Haan, sab theek hai. 
well mm-hmm. and and also that uh, he gets a job in the railways which ring back yeah. rings back to to kisi rail se goes up to him like a full circle yeah the motif is is very like prominent across the movie like right. even that he gets a job in the railways right yeah so before we close uh, i would like to mention or read out the lyrics to the final song of the movie uh, bhor by indian ocean so it it reads uh, bhor bhor bhai ek udta panchi ja baitha ek dal khushboo dal ki man har le gayi gajab tha rang jama saas saas chahe ishq ka jadoo reh reh kare kamal and then it goes on to say that so basically what the song means or what the song is trying to convey is that there is a bird which wants to fly away and uh, it has flown on to this branch where she is sitting and the the smell of the branch the aroma that is surrounding her is very very comforting is very beautiful and uh, while sitting there the bird realizes that this is it she uh, the bird has reached her final destination so to say she is like there is no other city which would give me more pleasure there is no other destination i'd rather be at i find that i find that very symbolic of what the movie was trying to do wherein the characters were trying to escape banaras the characters were trying to get away from the city and uh, and so so the lines read panchi kahe kis gaon udu mein behtar jo is dal pankh sunehri shahad chad gaya antar tham gayi chal which means my soul has finally got peace uh, katal bhi aisa hua ki panchi mar ke mala mal allah mere chidi baaz ne aisa pheka jal katra katra aasma hai bujhi asal udan bujhi asal udan so wherein so this is what this is trying to say is that even when she finally received the death uh, she was she was very very wealthy wo mana mala mal ho gayi because uh, the trap that was laid for her uh, sort of freed her from all of this and she got the essence of her real flight which is essentially the freeing of the soul uh, which again is going back to receiving closure so i feel in that sense the film has this very beautiful underlying tone wherein uh, they are trying to you know talk about freeing the soul getting closure in the backdrop of a setting which only and only talks about death yes right. so i feel that is uh, very very beautiful according to me and i have yeah. always loved this movie and it's one of my mm-hmm. most favorites yeah Yeah so I I like this movie because I personally think it's very well written and when I say it's very well written is is you know you know the conflicts between you know the relationships between all the characters very well like if I I tell you to extrapolate somebody's character you can think of a lot of things and that is literally because you have information about this character which is fleshed out and put into the script very uh, obviously and uh, in in that sense i th- that's why i say it's one of the i think it's it's one of the best written scripts to come out of indian cinema in the past 10 years or so and yeah it's, it's certainly i think for a lot of people who have watched uh, started watching hindi movies seriously only in this decade i think it would be at the top of their list for a lot a lot of people um this i i've always maintained that uh, india does make uh, very great films also even as, if you compare it to the hollywood uh and and any other film industry in the country and this is just i think one of those examples where this is a great film you if if you see this uh, you know a slight change in the way stories are being told in the current decade and in the last decade and the current decade is that the stories have moved to uh, move from the cities to the small towns right or or the stories the better stories are coming out of places which were earlier not depicted in in the mainstream bollywood uh, right. or, or even in generally in hindi cinema and i think that's a refreshing change and i hope uh, we keep at it uh, you also see you know many very interesting and uh, you know original stories come out of even regional films which mm-hmm. is something to probably look at uh, further down in the podcast sure uh yeah i i i i totally agree to that i think it also has something to do with the aspirations of the people at that point of time so say back in the 70s 80s when the movie started movie started moving uh, to you know the cities and they there used to be these huge mansions because that was where the people's aspirations lies now not like right. at this point the people's aspirations lay in moving to the small town but the point is that there is a lot of development going on in the small towns which is also bringing them on to the global map so so 
and so also you know the people the creators the creators right. who have come in are, are people not from uh, from the cities you know this right. i mean this is this is true about india in general for example if you look at any cricket team of the 70s 80s 90s mm-hmm. you'd see that it's filled up with people from cities right but if you so sort of the elitism has gone yeah that i mean and if you see i mean of course virat kohli is the captain now he's from delhi but before this mahendra singh dhoni comes from rachi mm-hmm. right in india's best bowlers right now don't come from cities india's batsmen today do not come from cities cheteshwar pujara comes from a rajkot and things like that with rajkot baroda one of them but not you know not your your uh, normal big big cities like mumbai delhi kolkata etc right. and uh, it's it's also this shift this paradigm shift of you know the creators themselves coming from places which are not cities which has brought in a refreshing change i think right so with that uh, i think we are ready to close this episode on this beautiful beautiful movie called masan which we thoroughly enjoyed uh, even though we have watched it like three or four times now and which we even uh, we love the script of the movie and uh, the town oh god i have always been enchanted by banaras personally ever since i watched uh, masan and ranjana for the first time so have yeah have you been to no i have uh, not it is still there yeah. on my bucket list It's- yeah uh, inshallah we'll get to visit someday uh, so thank you for tuning in listeners we are here do tell us uh, what you like about this podcast and what you don't about this episode and do recommend movies that you would like to us, like us to cover in the forthcoming episodes you can find me at uh, also goes by v on twitter and you can find devansh at uh, devnash devnash on twitter and insta yeah and we'll put up some links in the show notes please feel free to check them out give us feedback we it's really important for us to hear back from you thank you thank you so much bye bye niyat mein thodi तुझे सोचू तो फूट जाता